Generative artificial intelligence seems to be the new trendy thing that tech savvy people are obsessed with, especially gamers who see generative AI as potentially a new feature in future games. There's even been some experiments out there of using generative AI in NPC dialogues, and they've been quite interesting, but nothing more than just purely experimental. But then comes the other, the other hypothetical, and that is, can you make a whole game purely through generative AI? Well, there was a studio that actually tried to dabble with this. Uh, the support games, the video game support developer Keyword Studio tried to create a game solely using artificial intelligence, but unfortunately, it failed, and it was simply because the technology was unable to replace talent. Well, that doesn't mean, you know, okay, case case closed, no more generative AI in video game development. I think it's a matter of how you approach this new piece of tech. Microsoft is another example who is uh, who recently actually opened a department that's specializing in creating dev toolkits that are enhanced with AI in some way. And I think that's great because it's not about trying to use AI to artificially generate product for you. It's about how can we use AI tools to better improve and enhance our creative work of art, right? And even help alleviate some of the more mundane, monotonous and arduous tasks of video game development, video game coding, something like that. I'm not that much of a tech savvy person to look into the, the complete logistics of this, but generative AI has a place in game development and it's all about how it's gonna be utilized. Nintendo's president, Shintaro Furukawa, addressed this in a shareholder Q&A. He acknowledged that generative AI, which is a hot topic right now, holds a lot of creative potential. However, he also pointed out that significant issues with intellectual property rights that come with it. I think we all know when you use generative AI, it's basically taking references from all sorts of data across the internet data that derives from actual creative artists and people out there who've put their work on online and is taking little bits here and there to create something of its own. So Furukawa emphasized that while Nintendo is always open to, to, to new technological developments, they currently prefer to rely on their experienced team to create unique and memorable gaming experience. He stated, Generative AI, which is becoming a hot topic, can be used in creative ways, but we recognize that it may also raise issues with intellectual property rights. He also highlighted that the Nintendo's extensive experience in gaming in the gaming industry is something not to be uh, understated, and that they're always open to utilizing AI, but will continue to deliver value that is unique to Nintendo and cannot be created by technology alone. Right there, that statement says a lot. It means that yes, generative AI has potential. There is something there that could be utilized, but it should only be utilized as a feature, as something that improves what currently creative talents can utilize. It shouldn't be an, a complete over-reliance on it. And that is where some developers, maybe some companies, are kind of out of touch with. It's you cannot over rely on this tech. Find a, find a creative approach, find a unique approach that helps enhance already your current creative process. I cannot wait to see when a AAA game studio utilizes this to an amazing degree. And hopefully with intellectual, you know, copyright issues being resolved, we can see some real potential with generative AI. It's gonna be a while before we see anything more about it. I does, it does also concern me that some game companies are maybe jumping the gun and laying off, you know, big, uh, big groups of talent, thinking AI is gonna replace all of this. If they are actually doing this, and if these layoffs that we've had for the past couple of years is a part of this generative AI movement, then it saddens me 
because it's a, again, it's a way of, it's a, it's a way of a company just not having enough foresight and just thinking, okay, this is the new, this is the new trend. We need to, we need to implement this and we need to implement fast. We got to put it on everything. No, try not to be too hasty. Try to be a little bit more practical about this. Yes. Generative AI will be big. Not yet but it can have a lot of potential in the near future. Generative AI in video games is something that I still can't really fathom. And I would recommend you check some experimental videos out there of people using AI in NPC dialogues, um, even a little bit of, uh, there's even use for voiceover. Uh, I'm not sure about how Generative AI will work with level designs and such, but it is here to stay. And it will take its it'll, it will take its time, and uh, we'll have to see how the next generation of game development is going to shape up to be. I think it also provides a, a greater new accessibility for developers who are not part of big companies or big publishers to utilize AI dev toolkits to basically work on you know on a small scale video game project with a small team instead of having the big budget of AAA studios and that is what i'm really looking forward to seeing this and, and, and i i already love the resurgence of indie games but this could really elevate the indie game genre to a whole new level so i'm patient but i'm also cautious we'll see how generative ai will play out in the gaming industry soon enough we're gonna take a short break but we're gonna still be covering more news from the world of entertainment so be sure to stay tuned right here to the evening buzz if you liked this episode of the evening buzz drop a like and subscribe be sure to follow us on instagram for all our daily updates and top stories